Okay. Okay, here you go, Louis. Amazing presentation. Thank you so much. You talked about ideas and the masses, and I'm wondering the Thomas fire, were you able to gain access to GPS data from citizens who were in the line of the fire to make a more accurate assessment of the outline? You had that white line. Would that have been more accurate if you had you know, real-time GPS data from the people who were sending texts and Twitters is that something that you're thinking about, or is that something you were all we experimented able to with do? It. Um, so we looked at Twitter data, for example, to do sentiment analysis around the fire boundaries. Um, Jorgen might be in the room. Uh, Jorgen and his students um, developed a mobile app to collect data from the citizens on the fire front or wherever they are, if they're able to see the fire. So we can stitch these together uh, in visual interfaces. So we've done some work, uh, but it wasn't the main goal of the project, and also um, it inspired us, the project, to do these things, but maybe in the future more. Yes, again, thank you. That was a fantastic presentation. I wondered, uh, again, with fire, because I'm a Californian, <laughs> are you planning to do any other regions of California to integrate? You have uh, San Diego, it looks like, and uh, maybe LA County, are you going to go to other counties like in Northern California, like up in the Bay Area, to try to do some further work in this area? Yes, that's our goal. Um, our NSF funding period actually just ended, so we are looking into some sustainment efforts to, for, to build more into the program. And yesterday there was a panel on extensions of, for example, the scenic network and having Wi-Fi-like systems as a value add. So we are starting to work with the state and starting with our local and LA County fire departments um, to show how actually a public-private partnership here can form and maybe in the future become a state-supported entity. So definitely that's a big part of our daily conversations to this uh, last couple of months going into the future. And it's transferable and expandable uh, the techniques we developed, if we wanted to the whole globe. You know, it's adding more data sets in at this point. Okay, we have a question over here. You said with regard to the, the fire modeling that the fuel, uh, fuel data was one of the weak links. Did you consider using any sort of fuel growth models that would be tracking and estimating how the fuel might be developing based on weather conditions and things like that? Yes, the short answer is yes. Um, some of the future work we define is in the fuel space, both using the satellite information and fuel growth models and doing the same closing the loop uh, idea for fuel so it becomes a part of uh, the fire models. This one I think is all the way back, I see a hand, but. I'll stop when you say stop. <laughs> okay. Who, who had the question? Hi, really great presentation. Thank you. Um, from an infrastructure engineering standpoint, I was just curious, do you think that there's some sort of design pattern that you could make a recommendation on around this idea of being able to put numbers and measurements to the way that we use IT infrastructure across the PRP, other distributed networks? I'm not a network engineer, so I should be careful what I say. But uh, I think there is a lot of work going on together with PRP and Scenic and ESNet uh, to make these networks more dynamic and actually schedulable or co-schedulable with other services. Um, so the patterns there, um, in my opinion, should be extended to uh, other platforms. Um, that was a great presentation. We've talked about this before. And one of the, my question is, another possible use is, because it, generally speaking, um, the estimate is about a third of the trees in California are actually dead as a result of drought and disease. 
and therefore at huge fire risk. And the logical approach would be to cut those trees down as fire prevent prevention. But we actually never have enough resources to do that. So I'm wondering if that mapping could be used to identify the areas of the highest fire risk, and then you apply your limited resources to remove the trees, the fuel, someone else mentioned, from those areas as a, as a way of reducing their over, overall uh, risk of fire. Yes, and some of actually what the system supports is these what-if scenarios. You can drop a pin and see how it grows, the fire, in certain conditions. Um, We've done it for the UCSD campus. We actually looked at um, different areas in the UCSD campus and which areas were more fire uh, prone, and based on that, doing some fuel management on our campus. And um, we are working with some of the um, public utilities and land management authorities to look into those scenarios of um, can we identify how it burns in some areas and manage fuels accordingly. But again, that's one bit of information. It's not the decision. It's a, in the way of decision support that needs to be backed up with expertise to really be able to do that. So, uh, Ilke, I have a question. Um, so we all remember the Thomas fire last year. Um, and I know you guys were really, all of you were very busy during that time. Can you give the audience the the a sense of the sort of human resources that uh, an event like that takes. How many people were working on the project? How long were your days? Did you get to eat? Um, was you know? Did you did have you? to set? A, did you have to set up a, a, a cot in the in the room so people can take a nap? What was it like? For the lilac fire, we were at the dispatch center until 5 a.m. in the morning until we were sure that you know the fire was dying down and things like that. And Jessica was. They're deployed on the fire camp, which is like a 2,000 people operation and huge. Uh, they have um, catering, they have all kinds of things, big plotters that they print and go with, um, things like that. And everyone who manages the fire is there. And with the Thomas fire, Jessica was actually there five days straight until the late hours of the night working with the communities. I think she deserves a lot of credit for that. <laughs> And she's still recovering from that, so it's a really big effort uh, in terms of doing the operations. So we are really careful about taking on too much on the operations, and we are more about training the fire departments in, the, in our sustainment efforts so they'll be able to do it instead of us being and will be on a support role. Um, so there's a definitely big discussion around resource management there. Okay, well, with that, um, I'd like to thank, okay, it's, it's a great talk, so please uh, thank our thank keynote you. this morning.